This is the To Health With That, Naturally Healthy in No Time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor Amy Nuzel, and this is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, we're going to talk about undermethylation, another MTHFR basic state. Last week, we talked about overmethylators, but undermethylators are actually a little bit more common, according to the research of Dr. Carl Pfeiffer in his book, Nutrition and Mental Illness, and also in his other published works. Undermethylation isn't really one thing. It's a tendency based on your genes, your lifestyle, stressors, diet, and environment. Undermethylation is also a tendency that flows on a spectrum from very mild symptoms to far more severe ones. If you're not sure if you're an undermethylator, if you're methylation neutral, or if you're an overmethylator, then visit our previous post for a comparative chart. It's kind of a worksheet that you can do to figure out where your basic state is. As with everything else, even the most severely undermethylated person will have some associated traits and not others, and also may have some traits that belong in the overmethylated category. It's all very individual. The biggest constants are high achievement or perfectionism, seasonal allergies, and depression. Undermethylators, when they're balanced, have an amazing capacity to push their dreams forward. They're blessed with so many positive traits. High motivation, high drive to achieve, perfectionism, competitive, and strong-willed. It can be a darker side with that. Maybe obsessive-compulsive traits or even disorder, anorexia, workaholism, other addictions, and ritualistic behavior. Also, undermethylation, when it's not balanced, can lead to physical or medical issues. Seasonal inhalant allergies are the most common. This picture, uh, the undermethylation picture, I mean, is dominated by high histamine levels, and so this is one of the most common problems, even in relatively mild or moderate undermethylation. It's also one of the last things to get fixed Headaches. They could be hormonal, they could be allergic, they could be stress-related or migraine, high histamine and its accompanying issues, ulcers, addictions, so softer addictions like workaholism in more healthy situations, but that can progress also to harder addictions. And depression. It's very common in this group and it can be quite severe. At the extreme end of pathology, undermethylators can be prone to paranoia, delusions, or phobia. Things like the FBI or CIA is after them, their neighbors, an alien, etc., etc. Denial of or tendency to hide illnesses. Illness just doesn't go with perfection very well, right? And so there's a tendency to kind of mask illness. Hearing voices. Um, Dr. Pfeiffer estimated this to be 5 to 10% of this group, although I haven't seen it as commonly. Major depression, certainly, and even suicidal tendencies. There are some nutritional tendencies that go along with undermethylation as well. Typically, undermethylators have a reasonably bad reaction to B vitamins. Not every undermethylator experiences this, but many do. B vitamins, especially, unfortunately, folate and B12, can cause very extreme reactions. Often, these folks have low calcium and or magnesium, often low methionine, often low B6, very often low serotonin, and it can be extremely low, and The corollary to serotonin is melatonin because it's made from serotonin, so it tracks right along with it. There's also some good and bad reactions that are more typical in this group for medications. Now, these are general guidelines. They're not at all a certainty because this is very individual, right? But it's a decent starting place. So typically undermethylators have good reactions to SSRI medications, and remember they do tend towards low serotonin. So these are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Antihistamines, again, they tend towards high histamine. Methionine, SAMe, DMG, or TMG, which are all methyl donors and they all have the tendency to boost serotonin. St. John's wort, melatonin, calcium and magnesium, zinc. Antioxidants, vitamins A, C, E, alpha-lipoic, resveratrol, that sort of thing. Uh, Inositol, B6, and omega-3 fatty acids. So those are all tendency towards good reactions. Now, tendency towards bad reactions with the drug class called benzodiazepines. They don't usually work very well for this group. Often folic acid, folate, folinic acid, and 5-LMTHF, 
And folic acid obviously is a separate issue for MTHFR folks, but even undermethylators who don't have an MTHFR situation may not react well to it. Choline, histidine, DMAE, copper, and high folate foods. All of those things may produce kind of a bad reaction in undermethylators. Finding your best path forward is still, you know, trial and error, but this can give you some starting points. Remember, all of this depends not only on your MTHFR polymorphism, but any other polymorphism you might have, as of which there are likely hundreds, if not thousands, and also your nutritional status, your stress levels, your sleep patterns, all sorts of things. So be patient with yourself when you're finding the best nutrients for your body. Starting in April, join me, Dr. Amy, for this once-only beta test group of my 10-week MTHFR 101 course. We'll have weekly Zoom talks, Q&A sessions, and you'll get lots of resources to get your MTHFR journey started right. Shoot me an email, amy at tohealthwiththat.com. See you there. Thank you for listening, and I do hope you'll join me in the beta group of the MTHFR 101 course. For my listeners, it is totally free. So do shoot me an email, amy, A-M-Y, at tohealthwiththat.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.